Welcome back to the ESBR YouTube channel. Today, I'm delighted to be, delighted to be joined by the British and Commonwealth Super Lightweight Champion, who's fighting in just 48 hours' time, Akeem Ennis Brown. Akeem, how are we? I'm all good, my brother. I'm all good. How are you, man? You right? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, so, obviously, the fight now is just 48 hours away. Um, you're fresh off the back of the press conference this morning. Um, another heated press conference. Do you feel like you've got in his head? I think I've always been in his head. Since he signed this paper to fight me, I've been in his head. I think he dreams about me, thinking when he goes to sleep, when he wakes up, when he showers, thinks about me, when he eats his food, thinks about me. I think I'm just always in his head. I live in his head. But to us, I don't really care about that. I don't really mind. I just want to get him in the ring and get to showtime. Yeah, it's not far away now at all. Um, obviously, we did see in your last fight with uh, Philip Bowes, that, again, was quite a heated uh, build-up. Is this some? Is that kind of something you enjoy and something you look forward to? Um, yeah and no. Like, for me, it's not always planned, but it's a case of, um, I think, it's more better when there's, like, a bit of need or something, kind of, I guess, because we're all fighting for something. Like, it's a career change of things for all of us, you know what I mean? Make or break. Mm -hmm. So, um Tensions are always going to be high, but for me, it's not personal. You know, I mean, it's not personal. It's just a job. It's just business, and as long as I can have fun doing my job, then I'm a happy man. Something that kind of surprised me when this fight got announced that this was a kind of a voluntary defense. Um, what was it about the Sam Maxwell fight that attracted you to to the fight? That's a challenge, isn't it? It's a challenge that um, some people think I can do. See, a lot of people say, like, you know what, this is a fight you walk through, it's easy, not that old, this and that, la da da But trust me, I wouldn't even care about it, most things, forget it, and we want to find a harder challenge. But for me, like, I get off of um, challenges or get off of the fact that people say I can't do something, and I love proving people wrong. So, um, yeah, that's that's what made me want to take this fight. Um, and I had another name to my ever-growing resume of fighters, what people said I couldn't beat, but ended up beating. Do you feel like that's kind of the story of your career so far? I know in the Chris Jenkins fight, even the Philip Bowes fight last year, people were kind of um, putting you as like the underdog and thinking, talking, maybe you can't do it. Is that something kind of you thrive under? Yeah, it's cool, I guess. Um, I don't, to be honest, I like it in a way that way, but I don't really care now because more, it's more so now just proving it to myself and I'll prove it to myself how good I am. So if Sam Matsoll is going to be a great fighter or a good fighter that these people will say, then... Um, it just makes me a greater fighter the way I plan to go be it. Yeah, and as I said previously, there has been quite a few harsh words in the build-up. Um, but what do you think is Sam Maxwell's biggest strength? Um, no, he's not, like, that's what I'm saying. It's not even a uh, factor of his biggest strength. No, I never said he's a bad fighter. I think he's a good fighter. I just don't think he's as good as me. What's his strengths? It don't really matter. None of it's going to help him when he's in there with me. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter what strengths he thinks he's got or hasn't got. Um, I just know what strengths I have and what I'm good at and what I'm going to do. And that's all really matters. And that's the thing, the difference in it. Like, he's thinking about me and talking about me and this is what I can do and or can't do, whatever. I want to talk about what he can do or can't do. I just have already spoke about what I can do because I know that's all that matters. Now. Come fight and I'm going to show it. What do you think... What do you see in his game that you can you feel like you can really take advantage of? Everything, everything. <laughs> it's the fact that I'm just a better fighter all around. Um, that's the main thing what I'm going to take advantage of. And it's literally that, like, you're going to get outclassed. You know what I mean? There's no one point was, oh, what can I do? Game plan this. It's just literally, I'm the better fighter. I'm just such a better fighter. Not that I'm saying blow my own trumpet, like I'm a great fighter, but I just mean, I'm better than him, and now I'm going to go show it. There's levels to this, and I don't think people really, who know boxing, really understand the levels, so it's for me to educate the boxing world, man. <laughs> Obviously, this fight was meant to have happened months ago, and unfortunately, you had to pull out with an injury. How is your fitness now? Are you fully fit going into this fight? 100% more fit than I ever was back then. I think everything happens for a reason, so I think as much as I was annoyed and disappointed of the fight back in March, I look back on it now, yeah, from God, I think it was a blessing from him. So um, I thank God for what happened in a way because I'm only a bit older, wiser, stronger, faster, fit, as you say, better in all departments. And that only allows me to now go on a better point than I would have put back on then. I still would have beat him back then, but I think I'm going to beat him better now. Obviously, uh, Ben Field stepped in 
to to face Maxwell in that fight. Did you actually watch that fight live? What did you make of his performance in that fight? Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Um, for me, um, I'm same with like everybody else. They didn't. They weren't the really best performance, but I don't really think much of it. A case because um, Styles makes fights. I guess um, could have been style. Could have been the occasion. Could have been anything. Like, I've had fights where I fight lower people than I have my best performances. So, as me as a, a professional fighter, who understands the game. I don't really look too much into that. And once he's in me, it's probably going to be a different fight. So that's all that matters. I know in the in the press conference today, he spoke about your power and how he doesn't feel like you have the power to kind of threaten him. What do you have to say to to that? Same thing I say to everybody else: stand in front of me, let me bang you, and then punch you. <laughs> I see if I have no power. And like, come on. The truth is, yeah, well, like, there's no, there's no one boxer, regardless of 100 knockouts, one knockout, no knockout, whatever. There's not one boxer in the sport that can't do it in a power to knock someone out or hurt somebody. And to be honest, if you look at what I've done achieved, I don't think a fighter like me could have done achieved that without any power. So they say, as my opponents, um, as one of the toughest opponents who try to walk through me if I have any power. But it don't matter. I'm not here to prove to no one else do I have power or not. I'm here to get the wins and W's. I progress my career to the next stage. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a that's a really good answer. I think we saw that with Michael McKinson the other week on the uh, on the matchroom card, where people have been saying he has no power, but does it matter if you keep getting that win? Like at the end of the day, that's all that matters, doesn't it? So, um, so obviously you've been out of the ring for eleven months. What do you make of the idea of ring rust and? Like obviously, it's a big, like, well um, debated theory in in combat sports. What do you think about the idea of ring rust? I think ring rust is a is a mindset, and if you think you're ring rust or you have that conception of it in your mind, you're probably going to perform like that. But for me, um, I don't feel rusty. I feel like in the best shape, the best form I've ever been. And even though I've been out the ring for just under a year, under them light, professional lights of a crowd and that. To be honest, I've been in the ring every day for the whole of this year. Um, I'm also this year sparring top level fighters all around, you know what I mean? All around Britain, all different levels from world level, European level, British level, all type of different fighters. So um, I'm mixing it with the best. So um, I I feel like that's not going to be playing no part in this, any type of ring wrestling, they call it, you know what I mean? Like it's just a mindset if you think it's that, but trust me, it's not going to matter. <laughs> How long has your training camp been for this fight? Too long, bro. Too long. Like, <laughs> um, I've had probably like I don't know. I've had three camps for this fight now. You know what I mean? Like three yeah. um, on and off camps, and like and been on and off in the gym nonstop. Anyway, like from January, I started training for the March camp. Um, obviously got injured, had a bit of time off, and then once I was recovered, started training for. I think we had a date for April, June, July, all them different dates. So I was just staying ready, but there were no confirmed dates. So I just stayed ready for them, and then. Move on from there, and then we're like, here we are now. So, um, I just had to. I basically put it, I basically missed all of 2021, really, truly. I had no chance to celebrate, chill vibes. Um, <laughs> I've been out partying, clubbing in like how long? Um, I ain't eaten the best food in a little while, so um, yeah, it's been a long time. But as much as it's a bit it has its moments, I think that's gonna once again, like I said, I think it's all part of God's plan for a reason to for me to be in the best shape right now. Um, and come Saturday. Do you think that time away has kind of helped your your mindset and like your approach to this fight? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would have not looked on the thought of that at the time um, or before, but I start to look at things a lot differently now. Um, especially because I've, I've handled um, setbacks and fights being called off and stuff, so I've kind of matured to that too. But even yeah, with this fight, the time out of the ring or how long I've been out of the ring about this year, whatever, it's gonna be time to kind of. Not only mature and wise enough and see the game how it is, but I've had to, have to learn a lot of new things, not just um, physically in the, in the sport, but um, financially, business wise. Um, um, and I've had to, have to adjust to this new level of whatever, uh, we call it fame, whatever, British level, whatever you want to call it, um, just accustomed to this new new way. And I think it's prepared me for what comes next. So, yeah, thank, thankful for that too. Yeah, and obviously as you keep winning, that's just all those kind of aspects of, of boxing and the, the sport will become even more important as well. Um, yeah, 100%. Um, so obviously, as I mentioned, this is your first defence of those Commonwealth and British titles. Um, what what does holding those titles mean to you? Um, 
It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. You know what I mean? Um, it's probably the, uh, the all titles I've ever had. It's probably the best feeling so far. I've awarded them. Has its perks. You know what I mean? Um, I've gone to the shop before and left my card at home and got free shopping. You know what I mean? So I had a spread for it once. So like, that's great. Good time. But now, all the side, the joke side, now it's a good feeling because for me, like I'm big on history. Um, I love I love my history. So mm. to be a part of history or making sure these these bouts are known or have their, their value just for being a part of history and stuff like that. I love that. Like I got a book with all the, everybody who's won a British title and stuff like that all through the first title. Like, I know my history are all about the title before the British title changed um, in 1929 or all, all that type of thing, you know what I mean? Um, um, so I love it. I just the way I'm so infatuated with history, all type of history, to be a part of that, especially the boxing history, that's what makes it a bit more valuable to me. It makes me want to hold these titles a little bit longer. Like even the point of like of opportunities of like I could have vacated, I didn't even have to fight time, I could have vacated and went straight off for the European if I really wanted to. But um like I don't know, like a part of being a part of history makes me want to kind of hold this out and maybe even win it outright to just solidify my name in history or just part of this British title of boxing history. Yeah, how how have you noticed um, like people's perceptions of you? Have you noticed you getting gaining more respect since you won those belts? Yeah, definitely. You gotta give my respect though, really, isn't it? Like from everything I've done, and I keep doing um, the boxing world has to give my respect. So, but yeah, definitely um, having the titles has a difference. The most thing I like I noticed is I went from being the most avoided to now the most wanted in some aspects. You know what I mean, like. It's not, I'm not sure of opportunities, whether I picked to fight Matt or not. Like, I know the people I could have chose from. I chose to pick Matt so because he seemed like he was the hardest challenge out there at the time, you know? So, um, yeah, like, it had its, its benefits, I guess. <laughs> um, we we have a preview show on the on the ESPR channel. We were talking on Tuesday about your record and how kind of underappreciated it is. And when you actually, like, look at the, some of the wins you've got over the last few years... Um, do you feel like you don't get enough respect for kind of the wins you've got um, recently? Yeah, I do. Um, well, I did anyway. Like, I want to why I did it because I probably still don't get the re- respect I deserve, but so I'm past caring now, you know what I mean? I don't really care. Like, the boxing world love me or hate me. They're going to watch me tune in. They know I'm here. So if they want to just keep not giving respect, and that's what it is. But I'm just going to keep on beating up their best fighters, and that's what I'm going to do. And I get fun out of doing that. So I don't care. I'm more... Now, I'm not trying to prove it to the box, but I'm more trying to prove it to myself. But at the same time, I prove it to myself. I'm going to demand the box here with respect at the same time. Yeah, you talk about proving it to yourself. What kind of, um, where do you want to get into the boxing world? Where would you, what point do you get to and you look back and go, I'm happy now, like I've achieved what I wanted to achieve? For me, I stepped my standards so high, um, so, so high. A lot of these people, even like Matt, so like that's at the standard just like British level or something like that. But for me, when I first walked into the sport, I said it's so high and I felt, I felt that's the thing what fighters don't do. Um, I say I want to be not just world champion, I want to be pound for pound the best. I want to go down in history, all that type of thing. And to the average person, that sounds a bit crazy. Well, whatever, you know what I mean? You're wishing. But I feel like you should set your standards high and if you fall a bit low, then, you know what I mean? It's great and it's a bonus about that. But, um, for me, yeah, like, that's where I would like to go. But when I first walked into the sport, even though I was saying that's what I want to do, I just want to prove how good I am, you know what I mean? Give it the best shot I got, see how good I am. And if I ended up failing under seven area level, English level, whatever, you know what I mean? Or not even getting to a title. And if I get my best, I was happy with that, yeah. Just knowing how good I was, I'd walk away happy. Um, same thing, if I fall short of world title or whatever, I'm happy as long as I know I get my best shot. But lucky enough, um, I'm still going strong. And I do believe I'm good enough to go all the way. So I should prove it to myself and see if, if I'm true, if I'm true what I think. Yeah, and I think your record does show that you do want that respect and you you do kind of want to prove to yourself and everyone that you can beat the best, especially in on the domestic scene. Um, talking, moving back to kind of Saturday's fight, how big is it to be on, on quite a big BT Sport card in on um, prime time on a Saturday night? Uh, yeah, it's big. It's big. It's good. It's had, it has benefits as well. But um, I ain't like overly gassed about it because it's somewhere I expect I should have been a long time ago anyway on these big mm-hmm. shows, doing all this stuff. That's why when I come here, I'm just so prepared for it because I found like I should have been here a long time ago. You know what I mean? So it's not like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm here. I mean, um, it's nothing to me really. Um, but at the same time, it beats being on a small show, doesn't it? So um, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that too. So yeah. Um, 
but like I say, I'm here to beat Sam Matsa and keep many more of these um, moments and nights coming. So, yeah. Yeah, and just finally, I don't really want to ask you about the the typical what's next after Maxwell, but I just want to ask you about the the kind of super lightweight division because I think it is a really strong division domestically. What do you make of kind of the the British scene at super lightweight? Yeah, um, yeah, no, even even like it's not a case of what's next because I don't know past it, but yeah, I still look at what could be next. Hmm. So um, I'm just happy that I have some opportunities, whether it be the British stay at the British. Into going on international route, going on European route, whatever can get me to world the world level. But um, domestically, super uh, super lightweight. Wow, I think once I beat Maxwell, there's kind of everybody except from anybody who's above me. And I look at the people above me. Realistically, only really leaves um, people like Hara, Jack Catchell, Josh Taylor. Really, they're the only real people. Um, Lewis Richardson since Lewis, I don't really feel above me. Um, Still a good fight, wouldn't mind having, but it's whether it makes sense to me now or not. Uh, Tyron McKenna, don't think he's above me. Good fighter, you know what I mean? I like Tyron McKenna, the character and that, but it's, you know I mean? don't think he's above me. Um, I hired my friend. Uh, Jack Catcher's a lion for fighting the world title. Uh, Josh Taylor is the world champion and got so many options that I don't think he'd be looking at me. So, like I said, there's no point me looking back and then all the people kind of above me um, are kind of all busy tied up anyway. So, Probably would have to be maybe a super lightweight international thing or a European mm. thing for me. Yeah, uh, I think that's where I think the time's run out. Uh, thank you again, especially on 48 hours <laughs> before fight night. Uh, wish you the best of luck, for, obviously, for Saturday. I'm sure you'll come away with the win and uh, look forward to hopefully speaking to you again in the future. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Thank you for the time, man. Speak soon. Yeah.